In this video, I'm going to show you how I fixed my MIG welder. So I bought this MIG welder um, a week ago, and um, you know, it works, it causes a spark and everything, but the motor for the wire feed is a bit flimsy. So you will hear it here, and you can see that it's working just fine, but as soon as it strikes an arc, you will see what happens. So as you can see, the, the wire feed drops when the, when the spark happens. So in order to fix this, I did a bit of googling about and I found some guy that had the exact same MIG welder and um, he uh, found what to do. So what he did was get a different power supply and uh, this is what I've got, a 24 volt 5 amp power supply and a pulse width modulation uh, unit that would work on 24 volts and uh, enough amps to power up the motor. So I did a bit of googling about and I found that the motor would be running on roughly 2 amps maximum, so a 3 amp pulse width modulator would work. So here I'm just taking apart the machine and taking a look at its components. And this is the website where I found the guy that had done this before, and uh, his description of what he's done. And uh, we also have the main circuit, the PCB circuit, and the specifications for the welder. So with this information I could figure out more or less what I was looking for and what I wanted to achieve there. So the intention was to create a separate power supply connected to the same uh, switch that powers up the rest of the MIG welder and uh, isolate the wire feed from the MIG welder circuit and uh, power it from this separate power supply through the pulse width modulation. Uh, the only uh, added difficulty to this was to actually power up the feed using the same trigger switch and that's something that we will get to a bit later in the video. But as you can see here, I'm just, you know, taking apart the wires for the AC lines, adding new connectors, and I've used some piggyback spade connectors so that I can piggyback into the switch output of the welder. So I piggybacked the positive, um, the live and the neutral, and then uh, I've connected the ground to the ball, to the machine. So this is where the switch sits, as you can see zoomed in. And I'm here drilling a hole in the machine for the potentiometer of the pulse width modulation that I'm a unit that I'm going to add later. So there's a unit placed in. Uh, in the place and here I'm just looking at the wires and everything and this is the two wires that feed the motor which I will be using as the trigger for the relay so what happened here is that uh, I spent a few hours trying to figure out a way to power up the pulse width modulation so what we have here is power is drawn from the mains fed into the 24 volts uh, transformer. The transformer feeds a makeshift relay basically an electronics gizmo here. Now all this does is it has power, it has a, tra a transistor and it has an op uh, optocoupler or photocoupler and it's got input and output that comes from the original two wires that went into the power. So the two wires that were going to the motor before are these two. These two are now powering up there 
And what they do is that they trigger the photocoupler, which opens this, which closes the circuit, and activates the MOSFET. The MOSFET then grounds this brown wire. This brown wire here is the brown wire that does the minus connection in the it's the power minus in here so the plus is always on there's always 12 volts in there but there's only zero to compare to when that MOSFET is on that MOSFET triggers on when there's power in these two wires which are the ones that originally powered the motor so with all of that in mind What happens now is that I switch on the power and this switch triggers the 12 volts to power up. So I've got 12 volts in this rail, but I don't have 12 volts in the MOSFET. So every time I push the button, power goes into this black and wire, black and white wire, and they trigger the mechanism, the relay there. That is just a relay effectively, but I didn't have any 12 volt relay, so I had to fabricate something. So when I click on this button, the, the 12 volt potentiometer pulse width modulation is going to be on, and then we can hear the motors spinning. And when you stop, stops powering up and if we increase the, the speed here it spins faster and this is the maximum speed so we have a full range of motion and if we fit completely turn to the left it doesn't have enough power to, to, to switch on the so we go from almost no power at all to a very powerful motor or switched off. So with all of that in mind, I can just now put everything back together. And as usual, every time you take something apart, when you go to put it back together, you're missing something. So, moment of truth. Let's see if we can get any kind of welds out of this. So what we learned from this exercise is that I don't know how to make weld. But I have a better MIG welder now. Here's some body panels I've welded after I took this video. So I reckon the welding machine is definitely working correctly now. Thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll see you soon.